Hey there, in this video we're going to be looking at the D3 library to start getting into some data visualization techniques. So this is the first video in a series. So as always, we'll be starting off from a blank project and moving on upwards from this video. So get yourself a new folder. I've called mine D3 circles because that's what we're going to be focusing on at this moment. And I'll be making a new file called index.html. As D3 is a JavaScript library, we will of course be using HTML and JavaScript for this. So go ahead and make a new HTML file. Simply call a title, something like D3 and circles. And inside of the body, we'll need to import the script files that we'll be using for this project, as well as D3. So we won't be using any fancy build systems, at least at the moment. So for now, we'll need to import D3 via a script tag that goes to d3js.org slash d3.v5.min.js. Let's also import a file called main.js and we'll make this a type equal to module. We'll then of course need to create that main.js. So let's go ahead and do that. And finally, we'll be using an NPM module called HTTP server to serve our index.html file instead of having to open it on the file system. So make sure you've installed that by running npm install http server. And we want that globally, so add the g tag. Then after doing that, we can run http server dot and that will run it here inside of this directory. As you can see, we have the HTTP server running on the 127.0.0.1 colon 8081. So I'm going to open that inside of my browser. So as we expect, we have a blank screen at this moment because we have nothing inside of our project. But the first thing I'd like to do is to describe exactly what we're building here. So we want to basically make an SVG element and that SVG element will allow us to create things like circles, squares, and other objects inside of that. So we can use that to draw on the screen. So let's start off by defining a width and height for our SVG. So we'll call it S width, and we'll make that 640, and we'll make the S height by 480. We can then use D3 to select an element. So that's done with the d3.select. Now d3 is currently a global object because we've imported it as a script tag. So we can use it here without importing it. But if you've got a build system and whatnot, I recommend doing that via imports. And inside this selection here, we need to put exactly what we want to select. Now a good way of displaying this is to head back over to our index.html and let's just make a div with the ID of app. This allows us to understand that we're sort of selecting this div and we can go back to saying select hashtag app. You can imagine then that the response, i.e. the return to doing this would be our app element. So this at the moment is similar to the document.get element by ID. And then for example, we may want to select the app ID. With that in mind, if we then said something like const paragraph is equal to app dot append P with the text of hello world. And then we refresh our page you can see that we've appended a p tag with the text of hello world to this app div. And indeed, if we look at the body, we look at the div tag here, we can see that we have a p inside of that. So at the moment, we're using D3 to select a particular element. We're appending an item to that, and then we're giving these attributes such as text and whatnot essentially allowing us to have full control over what we do here inside of the DOM. So for now, let's remove our paragraph because we don't want that. We're not interested in that at the moment. Instead, we want to make an SVG and that will be equal to the app div. And we want to append 
an SVG to that, we want to give that the attribute of width equal to the S width and the attributes of height equal to the S height. Once again, if we refresh and we take a look inside of our DOM, we can see we now have an SVG with the width of 640 and the height of 480. We've been introduced to here this dot attribute element and this dot attribute here allows us to select any attributes of the item that we're adding to the DOM, such as an SVG. We can then directly add things to that element. So we could do the same if we had a dot attribute for ID and we wanted to set the ID equal to hello SVG. If we save and refresh, we can now see that we have an ID of hello SVG. For now, let's remove that. And I want to think now, how do we get a circle to appear inside of this SVG? This is almost a little challenge at this moment. If we wanted to append a circle inside of the SVG element, based on what we already have, how could we do that? Have a little think about that. Maybe pause the video, try it yourself, and then continue. Well, the way I would do it is by making a constant called circle and setting that equal to the SVG element. And we want to append a circle to that. And if we just hit save and refresh, we can see inside of our SVG, we now have a circle. We can't see the circle because it currently doesn't have a fill. We also haven't given it a particular radius or an X or Y position. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course, you can imagine we'll do that by giving that particular attribute using the dot ATTR. So let's go ahead and add an attribute for the fill. Let's set that equal to red. We can also attach the radius such as 10. We can give this an attribute of CX. Simply put that at 180 for now. And also a CY of 180. Let's hit save and refresh our project. And if we look here on our screen, we can now see we have this red circle. And we've done that by querying different parts of the DOM. For example, starting off with this app, we're then appending an SVG to this app element. We're then appending a circle to the SVG. And all the while, we're given these different attributes. At the moment, it's not very data driven and we're having to do a lot of the work ourselves with regards to positioning and whatnot. So let's think, and we can put this maybe as one circle. Let's go down and make multiple circles. So once again, there's multiple ways we can do this, but we can start off by having a positions, make that an empty array. And then we may want to generate multiple positions inside of the array. So let's maybe have, and even better, we want to generate multiple random positions. So we could turn this into a function called generate random positions. We want to maybe have a max positions. And inside of this, we can have a for loop, which starts at zero. And it will continue to increment based on the max positions. And for each item inside of our positions array, we want to generate a CX and a CY. So if we look up here, the CX and CY determines where that circle appears on the page. For example, if we change the CY here to be 250, you can see the circle moves throughout the page. So the easiest way to do that would be to make a math.random 
times it by our s width. And we'll do the same, math.random by our s height. We'll also use math.floor to floor this in both occasions. And now we can have a constant called circles because this will be multiple circles based on our SVG and will be introduced to a select all selector. That will select all circles. We'll add some data and that will be the positioned data, which we're gonna get by generating random positions, maybe 20. We'll then use enter and dot enter. What that does is it will ensure that for every data point that we have, we want to have a circle. And we can ensure that's the case by appending a circle. We can append whatever we want here, but the data element, we should have 20 positions and to accommodate for those 20 positions, if they're not found with our select all query, we want to append them as such. And we can set the attribute such as CX. And the way that we actually get the data, so that would be the CX for this particular circle, we use the D, so that's a function. And we return the D.CX. We can do the same for our CY. We can also set a radius once again. And this time we want to set the attributes of fill equal to blue. That's going to differentiate our circles. So let's refresh. And one little problem that we have at the moment is that we need to return the positions from our function because at the moment we have no data. But if we refresh, we can then see that we have all of our circles appearing on screen. So this has been an example of how we can use D3 to take that data and these data points, add them to the DOM, and then use the particular data attributes, such as the CX and the CY, and then have those elements appear inside of the DOM. So as you can see, if we look at the elements right here, we can see that we have an SVG with what should be 21 circles. Our first one is a fixed position and the rest are the ones that have been generated using our function. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button. It lets me know that you want to see more videos. And of course, let me know what you think inside of the comments section below. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.